So welcome back to um, learning how to do neural stack machines. Um, this is part four where we're going to learn a sequence using our new toy stack. So so before we, we built a stack in, in, in part three that kind of passed the sort of unit test of functionality for the pushing and popping operations. And, and now we want to kind of start the first little element of learning within, within the neural stack. And, and we're going to give it just a couple of parameters and, and see if we can make it fit to to data sets. So it's very exciting, but it's kind of the smallest amount of learning that we can start with. So we can validate it, make sure it works, and then move on to the next piece. So you always kind of want to bite off the smallest pieces possible that you can, especially when you're doing something like learning, just because um, you know, once parameters start flying around all over the place, it, it can be difficult to debug and figure out what's going on uh, unless you kind of work with it component by component. So this is why we're taking this approach. So um, let's talk a little bit about how the neural stack will learn. Now, and earlier in the blog post, which I don't think I mentioned in the video, um, th there's a, one really cool thing about the stack that, that actually makes it um, learnable. And, and it makes it so that, that we can actually take the error that, that we get at the output of the stack and, and find which pushes and pops kind of messed it up, which, which pushes and pops really created the, the mistake. Um, and that's... That's part of what makes it cool, and, and, and what makes it such a, a fascinating thing to kind of sit and think about, and really what makes the, the authors um, so so incredible. Um, so what, what what they did is they made all the operations in this stack, all these operations we're just looking at, they're differentiable. So they, they, they fit all of the the components of, of differentiality. So all these these um, these operations. Now. Um, there's obviously a lot of things you can go into. You know, we could, we could test for differentiality right now. We're not really going to dive into that too much yet. But, but um, so if you want some background on on calculus, check out this Khan Academy link. Um, for more on on neural networks, gradient descent, recurrent neural networks, please check out these three blog posts. I, I do consider them to be kind of prerequisites for this blog post, and to, to the that I'm not really going to re-explain most of this. But I'm going to do a little bit of a review on just some simple kind of back propagation error attribution techniques. So. When we say that, that the, the neural stack architecture is differentiable, what we mean is that the, the, the components of it, the, the, the mathematical operations, are all individually differentiable, and the ways in which they're connected to each other are differentiable. So let's, let's just kind of take a super, super small example of, of how we're going to be able to backpropagate error. And when I say backpropagate error, I mean when, when the stack creates an output data set, and it misses somehow. It goes, oh, you know, it, it should have output a 1.0 when it outputted a 0 0.9 at a specific time instance. The error is, is 0.1. And we want to figure out where in the neural network, where in the stack, where, where on the whole architecture did that error come from? Where do we mess up? Right? So it, it's really just a function, just like this one. The neural stack is more complicated, it's got more going on, but it's still just a function. And, and if let's pretend that this function had the same problem. So y output at a 1.0, or excuse me, should have been 1.0 and output at a 0.9. So the error was 0.1. Now ask yourself, did the error come from A or did it come from B? The answer is that it came from both equally. So if you were to take 0.1 error, you actually wouldn't even divide it evenly between A and B. You would say A missed by 0.1 and B missed by 0.1. Interesting, huh? Let's change it a little bit. A times A plus two times B. In this case, we actually give double the credit to B. Why? Because Y is twice as sensitive to B as it is to A. So we would say that the error at B would be 0.2, and the error at A would still be 0.1. This one, even cooler and perhaps more common, um, A times B. So now, now we're actually looking at kind of this same phenomenon, but they're multiplied times each other. So, so A actually has a control on how, how sensitive Y is to B, and B simultaneously has control on how sensitive Y is to A. So if we were to figure out how much of the error was caused by A, we would take the error and multiply it by B. Crazy, huh? And vice versa. So if we were to figure out how much error came from B, we would take the error and multiply it times B. So, so the error at A equals error times B, so 0.1 times B. And the error at A, or the error at B equals 0.1 times A. It's really fascinating stuff. So this is really just like, I mean, there's a gajillion rules like this, and it gets more sophisticated when you model more complicated functions, but as far as, for our neural stack, 
Um, most of its operations are just multiplications and additions, right? So, so these three rules can actually get us a really long way um, in, in figuring out where the error is coming from. Um, and, and when we say where the error is coming from, we're, we're implicitly asking what the derivative is. So um, um, I, I really try to make these tutorials um, as simple as possible and, and as accessible as possible. Um, I recommend going and taking calculus, but if you don't have time for that, if you're still in elementary school, I don't know, <laughs> um, just consider these three rules and, and consider the intuition of these three rules when we are trying to figure out how to do error attribution in, say, this function, which is what we're really actually going to, going to try to do. So if you take these rules, you can actually just backprop error through this. So, so if RT makes prediction, right? So, so if we read something from the stack, and what we read, we decide, is off by 0.1. Well, then the error starts here, at RT out. And then, oh, well, this was a sum. So then that means the error evenly goes into both temp and VTI. Oh, we just put some of the error on the stack. That's pretty cool. The error we put on the stack was multiplied by temp. That means temp is controlling how sensitive the error is at RT out when coming from VTI. So as you can see, it's the same rules, but we just kind of move the information back in here, sort of run it in reverse, and make sure that we, we take account for, for what's called the chain rule, um, and, and attribute the error into the right places. So you can see this will actually put some error into V, it will put some error into S, it'll put some error into S again over here, um, and uh, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, so, so this, when we back propagate into RT, it will, put, it will end up putting some error in S, I'm putting some error in V, and actually, you know, different, various different rows of V, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, when we backpropagate error into S underscore T, so our strengths, right? When we're trying to figure out did our strengths miss, did our strengths do something wrong, right? Then, then um, once we backpropagate it into, I guess, ST, right? Then, then we can kind of do the same thing in, in here. And so, what, what that looks like in implementation is like this, right? So, we're basically going to call this function which kind of runs this one in reverse um, while still attributing to the chain rule and the little rules that we talked about above. Um, it's pretty cool. Highly recommend pulling it apart. Um, as you can see sort of intuitively, um, when I talked about RT, so it went from here and then dumped some into temp and dumped some into V, um, you can kind of see it doing that. So right at the top, you see go into V and V delta. So anything underscore delta is the same size as V in this case, um, but it's just where we're going to put the error because V is already full of other stuff that we care about, right? So we don't want to write over it. So V delta is just a place to hold it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so so as you can see, um, we end up running sort of RT backwards and putting the error. So, and we end up putting it in V and put S, S delta and S delta in two different places. So as you can see, just like we, we set up here, where its error is going to flow, it's going to go into S here, it's going to go into S here, it's going to go into V here, it goes into S here, S here, and V here, which is pretty cool. So, what does all this mean, Andrew? Like, what, what are you even talking about? What I'm talking about is that when we randomly initialize our neural network, and we, we, you know, we've got our stack, and we push some data through it, and we say, hey, you know what, do whatever you want, pop, push, do whatever sequence you want, and it makes a bunch of predictions at the end, right? When it misses, what we're going to be able to do is flow the error back through here and say, hmm, which push should have been a pop and which pop should have been a push, right? Because, so the error, when it goes into ST, ends up getting put into UT, right? And D, uh, U and D, U delta and D delta. What that means is that this is telling us when we should have pushed and when we should have popped, or when we shouldn't have pushed and when we shouldn't have popped, right? So when we backprop this, it's going to put a bunch of you know pretty small positive and negative numbers inside of u delta, inside of d delta. They're, they're telling us what we should have done. So what's the smallest amount of learning that we can do? The smallest amount of learning we can do here is just rerun the whole thing, but push and pop a little bit differently based on these deltas, right? And this is how we go from error propagation to learning. So initialize these variables, if we need in background, blah, blah, blah. Um, and this implementation does exactly that. So, so it, it uh, we'll just look at like kind of the running part of it. So it, 
propagates data forward. So do what you want, 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 do what you want. Up, oh, up. Oh. Compare yourself to what you should have been. Figure out what the error was. And back prop. So when, when derivative is turned on, it's it's back propagating. Notice how it back propagates in reverse. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3. Right, see, so let me actually stop it here. So, because, um, and, and if you read, read the blog post, you'll see. But what we're doing here is just running this sequence and then back propagating the error. And uh, what we're actually trying to do is, is reverse this. So we, we pushed in 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.3, and we're trying to get it to pop out 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. And if you hit run, um, it'll actually make the browser freeze for a second. Oh, bad input. Oh, that's right about this. Uh, Excellent for typo. Make the browser freeze for a second. You'll kind of wait, and then survey says eventually it'll end up printing over here on the right. Aha! There we go. So then as you can see, it converged to three, two, one. It's pretty stinking cool. So we were able to study the correct sequence of outputs to adjust how we push and pop. And after 400 iterations, we were able to push and pop in the correct order so that we get almost exactly 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and 0.1. It's off by a little bit. If we, could, we kept iterating, it would get closer and closer and closer. It's kind of asymptotic, but um, that's what's going on. And, and so this, this little implementation here, it kind of run in your browser, um, um, is the first kind of taste of learning with, with your neural stack, which is pretty fun. Um, so now this, oh yeah, this stack only learns to pop first and then this little implementation here learns to push, um, which, which really, so learning to pop was just meant adjusting how much we popped according to U delta, like literally what we dumped in here, we changed what we put in by that by amount. So, so before we popped with the weight U5 and the, the, the U delta at five is what we, we subtract the amount that we popped before from this delta signal, this error signal, and it does better. That's the cool part. Oh, it's awesome. So awesome. Anyway. Um, so then we do the same thing with learning to push, and in reality, almost nothing changes in the code except um, for instead of just updating U weights from U delta, we also update D weights from D delta. But like all this error propagation stuff, it's all the same, and actually the D deltas existed up here. We just didn't leverage them, right? Um, which is interesting. So if we hit run, it will freeze for a second. Do, 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 do. And over here, soon we will see that it has correctly learned to reverse the sequence. Now we'll also see, if you look detailed in this code, you'll see that we, we kind of helped it, right? We, and it's also, it's only learning one sequence. It's not learning Sequences in general, so yeah, two seven two zero one zero. So this one's a little farther, but once again, if you, if you kept training it, it would it would get even closer and closer. Um, and this is the amount that it pushed and popped. Um, when it's done, so you can kind of see how that progressed over time. Um, so that's part four. That's uh, us getting a a neural stack to to learn how to push and pop. Um, um, and now the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to build a neural network to make decisions on when to push and pop um, a little more independently. And, and what we're going to see is that it's going to actually be able to model different types of sequences and push and pop them in, in kind of the, the, the more correct way. And, and, and actually, this neural network will be able to push and pop different lengths of sequences. So, so it'll be able to do some that are short, some that are long, um, and which gives it a lot more freedom in this kind of more toyish example. Um, so stay tuned for part five. And, uh,